Welcome to Intro to Christian Theology and welcome to this lecture. Today I'll be talking about Peter Berger's Sacred Canopy. I'll be discussing some of the key terms found in the first chapter of this work. It is important that before or after watching this lecture, you've read the chapter on its own. For the first of the important concepts, I'll be discussing world building. This term does not refer to literal building, of course, but to the development of human concepts and symbols which come to form a world for us. World building is the construction of society, culture, language, religion, science, and so on, all of which provide us with the place where we live. To describe this process of world building, Peter Berger uses the term dialectic. A dialectic is a relationship of two competing arguments which can be held in tension to produce a conclusion. Berger's dialectic is this, that humans produce society and society produces humans. To describe this dialectic, Berger identifies three terms. The first is externalization, the activity of humans developing concepts, ideas, or institutions which provide an order to the world we live in. The second term is objectivation, the process where humans take what is humanly created in the process of externalization and turn it into reality. For example, the reality of fashion. Humans invented the idea of clothing, likely as a way of keeping warm, and it has now become essential to our conception of beauty to be appropriately dressed. It is real to us, that is objective, that we expect people to wear certain clothing in certain situations, although the idea that clothes and beauty are associated is a concept created by humans. Finally, the final term is internalization. This is when what has been objectivated becomes internalized, that is, brought into ourselves and subjectively interpreted. Here it is prepared once more for the process of externalization. This final step explains why, in part, real things like fashion or institutional structures change. They change because humans have internalized them, reinterpreted them, externalized them once more, where they again become objectivated. This covers pages three through four of the Sacred Canopy. Now this threefold process of externalization, objectivation, and internalization is important because, as Berger indicates on page 5, all humans must make their own world. There is no pure or true world for humans because of the way our minds operate. All perspectives, whether from science, from religion, from apathy, etc., participate in world building. As Berger explains on page 6, this is why different cultures exist. Culture exists within all areas of human life and within subcultures. It is not something that humans can escape from. On page 9, Berger explains that culture does not exist internally, but is produced within our subjective consciousness. That is, we experience culture as singular persons. We produce language and then complain that we are bound or limited by language. We produce our own values and norms and then feel guilty about transgressing those values. The things we produce ourselves come to bind us, come to act as something external to us, even though we have produced them. On page 14, Berger pr provides some clear examples of these produced values and norms. And one of these examples are the roles assigned to us by society. For example, mother, daughter, husband, son, BC student, honor student, class president, and so on. We are often pressured by society to conform to these roles, while it is society itself, and us originally, who have created them. On page 15, as Berger says, Quote, every society faces the problem of transmitting its objectivated meanings from one generation to the next. These meanings include roles, for example, the ones I've discussed above. The role of mother and daughter of husband and son has changed dramatically in the past 30 or 40 years. For example, a stay-at-home father was unthinkable in the past generation, but now, though it is still somewhat questioned, it is considered a possibility. All of this activity of externalization of objectivation and internalization leads to the nomos. This is a, probably Berger's most important term. The word nomos comes from the Greek word for law or norm, and Berger uses this to define the set of rules, norms, and concepts that govern a given society. This forms the nomos for the society, its order, its basic way of operating. Society imposes and provides a nomos which is the interpretive key for our own experiences. We experience everything through this nomos, which, like a lens, provides a certain inflection for the way our lives operate. 
on page 21 as Berger continues. The nomos of society is internalized by the person, interpreted subjectively, and externalized once more. A good way of defining the nomos is to define the experience of a nomi. This is the experience of living without a nomos, without a law or order to your lives. It is rather unpleasant experience. The nomos provides meaning to our lives, and a life destabilizing event can lead to anomi. In this situation, the experience of affection may lose its meaning, for example. When this happens, a parent's connections to their parents or friends or other loved ones may be severed. If one feels no attachment to one's parents, then the concept of family is removed. Without family or heritage, one of the primary sources of identity is lost. There is no grounding or point of reference, and the person have, has no sense of who they are, what they should do, or why. This is anomi. You'll probably experience this at least once in your life, and most likely during college. Now, coming to the point of relevance for this book, the reason why we're reading it in this course, is the question of religion. Religion is, in Berger's eyes, the establishment of cosmos. Now, a cosmos is the concept of the universe, the rules of accompanying this, and this is a part of the nomos. The cosmos is, again, a Greek term, as is nomos, and it uh, is a Greek term used for universe, or world. Now, what Berger calls cosmization is the creation of a universe, and it is not limited to religions, but is also found especially in science. For example, what the universe consists of, whether it means anything, whether our role means anything in the universe, whether there is good and bad, good and evil, so on and so forth, all of these things are part of a cosmos, part of an explanation of how the universe functions and operates, which is created by humans.